Welcome to the Successful Nurse Coach Podcast. On this podcast, Laura and Shelby, both board certified nurse coaches, show you how to make as much money as you want in private practice as a nurse coach. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Successful Nurse Coach Podcast. It is Shelby and Laura with you here today, and we are going to be talking about a really sneaky, really sneaky form of resistance that both Laura and I support each other in and also support our clients with as well. And it is resistance that takes form as a mindset. And it's really important that we hook into it and begin to detangle it. And um, we're excited to talk to you about all of this today. There's a lot of nuance here. And without keeping it a surprise for any longer, we are going to be talking about scarcity mindset and how that plays into starting a business, how it plays in to being an amazing coach, all of these things. Um, But if you're listening to this and thinking, what the heck is scarcity mindset? I want to... I want to explain it not with like a proper scientific definition, but more with like some examples here. So I see scarcity mindset manifesting as as a few few different thoughts within our community. And so if you've ever had these thoughts, uh, I encourage you to stay tuned to the end. But some of them can look like, oh, so-and-so is doing this and they're doing it really well, so I can't do it as well. So I might as well not even try. Um, or because I earn so much work money working bedside, I'll never be able to, to earn that in my practice. Or this person is crushing it in social media or in person or however you define crushing it. So there's no space for me to as well. There is not enough people in the world wanting to be coached or for me in particular to coach them. Or maybe it's I don't have enough training <laughs> to actually pull this off. Mm. And um, Laura, I'm going to have you chime in here in in a second. But as as I rattle those thoughts off really quickly, it's kind of really easy to see how they are not in service to us. But then also, th- these thoughts are just really sneaky. Like Laura and I were were debriefing a little bit, and how how even now we we wrestle with scarcity mindset. It's just many many layers. Yeah, yeah. I feel like when I look back. And how does, how does this continuously show up for me? One of the biggest ways is really how I decided or we decided to make the successful nurse coach what it is, because, uh, not that long ago, we were getting on enrollment calls with nurse coaches who had hired somebody else and had not had a positive experience, but literally everybody that we talked to had already talked to this other coach. And so my brain was saying to me, oh my gosh, there's not enough clients. This is this niche is getting flooded by this other coach. She's in everybody's inbox before we are. Uh, it's just, and it made me feel uncomfortable and it made me feel graspy. And I remember sitting with it and it felt, it felt bad for, for many reasons. First of all, no one was having good experiences. So it's not like people were coming on our enrollment calls going, I just had the best business coach ever. They were coming with no results and we were going to be their second business coach, but I was bothered that we were second, their second thought. And instead of feeling like there wasn't enough, I just decided that we were going to do it better. Like it was just a decision that, okay, this is an, this is a, an invitation from the universe to do it better. And, and maybe at that point we weren't in any, everybody's inboxes and we weren't promoting ourselves and we weren't doing crazy marketing. So there was just an invitation there to decide to be bigger than we were. And I think that's one of the ways we can help our clients and help ourselves is just to notice those, the, the yucky thoughts and how to use them as fuel to propel you forward, to create more value, whatever it is that you're feeling not enough in, um, taking that as a invitation to grow or to add value. And this shows up in my personal life as well. And I, I love this example because it, it just got me a few months ago was being on Instagram and seeing the uh, scrolling and seeing the wife of a podcaster that I really like 
And you guys, this woman is beautiful. Like she's my age. She's the most beautiful woman my age I've ever seen. Her pictures were magical. She looks exactly like I would want to look if that was my jam. If all I did was take beautiful pictures all day. And I, it totally made my day shitty. Like it made my day so bad that I all, like I decided I was probably going to take Instagram off my phone because there's just more pictures of beautiful women there. And it made me feel frumpy and ugly and, and all the things. And that was the first time something like that had happened to me in so long where I had like a bad afternoon because I saw somebody else that I perceived was more than me. Um, so it, it mm. is sneaky. I caught it and then I, I laughed about it, but it was really interesting how that is my biggest negative experience with that scarcity. Like I don't have enough looks to go like to, to be relevant. Um, yeah. yeah. What about you, Shelby? What, how does it show up for you? Yeah. And uh, to rewind back to your coaching example really quickly, like how different would all of our lives be? Mine included, yours included, if you're listening, if Laura had chosen a different thought, right? Like that's, that's mm. how powerful being able to be aware of your own scarcity mindset can be because had Laura decided that, oh, there's already someone taking care of all the nurse coaches and they're getting all the business support that we need, there's a high chance that we would not be performing to the same capacity that we are now. And um, so I just wanted to point that out of, of how one seemingly small decision has a very big, very big ripple effect. Um, yeah. Yeah. And for me personally, this has evolved over time. And every time, just like anything in personal development, anytime I think I have like a good handle on something, one of my coachy friends will point out something and they're like, hey, there's that scarcity mindset or that black and white thinking again. And I'm like, gosh, dang it. You're right. Um, So I have a lot more more love and grace for myself. I don't beat myself nearly beat myself up nearly as much as I used to. But um, most recently... And I know I've shared on the podcast that that uh, my husband has gone back to work. It's been a really big transition for our family, and we are just navigating a, a new normal. And I was, I mean, I'll be honest, I was complaining to one of my my friends who also is a coach about just like this is hard. This is harder than I thought it was going to be, et cetera, et cetera. And we're figuring it out. But I was taking that <laughs> taking that moment to vent, and she goes. Hey, do you do you realize that you're coming from a place of lack right now? And I was like, well, "What do you mean?" And she goes, "Well, you have this definition of what a full and abundant life was supposed to look like, and now it looks a little different, and you've completely demolished it. Like it's not possible anymore because it wasn't going to your original plan." And I was like, "Oh, dang it, Natalie." Natalie, you got me, you know, like I was just, I was just venting and here you are like calling me out. And, um, I think that like, I'm so grateful for, for, for that friendship for a lot of reasons, but, um, just like a simple, like someone like pointing it out is generally all I need to be like, ugh, you're right. Like I act actually, I don't believe that the amount of joy that I am capable of having in my life is limited by by any of this um because at the deep root of it all i know i know that this is all happening for us and on purpose and that there is a you know greater purpose to all of it so that is how lack mindset has been super insidious and in showing up in my life lately um and again, now when someone calls it out for me, I just like chuckle a little bit. I'm like, oh, okay. Like that's, yeah. there it is again. Like it's not the end of the world. I think it's really part of the human experience to, to have moments like this. Um, but I think what's coming up for me right now is like, this is just not another reason for us to beat ourselves up, right? For, for not getting something and nailing it and being like a mindset ninja 100% of the time. This is just a, a space to practice. Yeah a little bit more grace and love for, for ourselves. And this is definitely going to be something that you will coach people through too. Yeah. And we, we had kind of started deciding to go this route today with this episode because of some recent, like always, we look at themes with our clients and our groups, and we've been seeing some themes of our clients feeling like they assume that clients are going to say no 
So they're going into proposals already. I thought they were going to say no. And that's just so interesting. And I remember Shelby did this with me at one point. I had a lot of proposals coming up a few years ago, probably. And for whatever reason, the frame I saw the world in, the frame in which I saw myself, I was just not thinking anyone was going to, I was going to back end offer like 14 people. And I didn't think anyone was going to say yes. <clears throat> and I remember you saying, well, if you don't think anyone's going to say yes, like they're not going to say yes. And isn't that interesting? Why would you think that no one would say yes? And that's a really good question we have to ask ourselves when we are selling coaching, when we are serving and, and we're inviting people to work with us. Are we going into those calls, into those proposal calls with a secret belief that no one's going to say yes? And if so, let's get super curious about that. Because if we don't believe in ourselves, if we don't believe in coaching and we don't believe in our client, we have no business even proposing to somebody. Like that's our job to cultivate that belief. It's our job to not be in scarcity um, so that our clients could not be in scarcity. Um, and I'd love to hear more of, of your experience with that, Shelby, of how scarcity is showing up in some of your clients and, and buying into to their clients' stories. Yeah. Also, just as a, a small side note here, if you hear my dad talking in the background, it's because he has a voice that carries across the literal Grand Canyon. So <laughs> I, I, I apologize in advance for that team. Um, but yeah, I feel like uh, scarcity has been just a theme in, in a lot of a lot of my groups over the past couple of weeks. Um, one in particular was what you were mentioning of, of I had a client of mine who proposed to a uh, woman who has a PhD in psychology. And she was like, I was genuinely shocked that she said yes. And my first question is why? Like why? Yeah, this person carries some letters after her name. Yes, this person has training. But by her saying yes, it is clear that you offered her an experience that she is unable to get anywhere else. And like, of course, that makes sense. That makes sense to me. Um, so we we worked through on that call, like, yes, hearing no doesn't mean that you've done anything wrong necessarily on a proposal call. But also, if you serve people to the highest degree on during the proposal process, you should expect them to say yes, because you both played full out. It should be a life changing experience and you should you should be expecting the yes. Um, how this also has has played out differently a little bit is whenever we have and this has come up for for me and you too Laura but uh, I'm seeing it now in some of our and some of our clients of whenever we look around on social media and we see people doing something similar as us and we tap into this belief that there is not enough for everybody to win and again I think that this might be like a default programming we all share. Uh, but the reality of it is there's like, I don't know, 24, less than 3,000 nurse coaches, I think, in existence, right? So there are not, the market is not oversaturated. It is impossible for the market to be oversaturated with that number of nurse coaches. And even so, you have a special message. You have a special capacity that is different and unique, even if someone is falling under the same umbrella as you. Even if there are 300 nurse coaches also doing inner child work, or there are 300 nurse coaches that also do some sort of trauma work or, or whatever, whatever it is, right? Um, if there's 700 nurse coaches that do mindset work, because spoiler alert, we all do, right? <laughs> so I think that's what um, mm -hmm. nurse coaching brings a lot of to the table. And so when we get into that comparison game of someone is is doing something similar to me therefore it threatens my success in some way when yeah. that is i just want to call it out because it's not true you two are likely on two opposite sides of the country with with different sets of eyes on all the all of the stuff you put out into the world so while again i feel like this is a theme in a lot of the points that we make of our community is really small so of course you're going to see it right like there's there's less than 3000 of us. It's super easy to see to see all of our stuff, but at 
at the same time, like, who are we really making it for? For the people in our communities is also been a been a big theme lately, too. So that's how it's been showing up lately in in our groups and just with our folks. Um, and again, Laura and I are not immune to this. And, and one last little story I'll share here is that belief that there is enough for everybody to win. I've been saying that for years and it took me probably two years to really fully believe it. Like my highest self believed mm-hmm. that there is enough for everybody to win, that the market is not too saturated, that there are not too many coaches in existence. That's just how my feed looks. But to stepping into believing that there is actually enough for everybody to win came with also the belief that nobody else can offer what I can offer. Yeah. So that's that deeper belief. There's a deeper belief there that you have something that's unique that nobody else can have or ever will have. And if that belief is big enough or it's seated enough in your identity, then it's really the antidote to a lot of the comparison game and feeling like there's not enough. Um, and if you're new, maybe you don't have that yet, right? And and so what do we do when we don't quite have the belief instilled in us yet? Then we do exactly what Shelby just said is we keep saying it to ourselves and out loud over and over and over again until it becomes our new reality in the way that we see the world. And I think that scarcity is almost like a pair of glasses. So if you think about you have several different pairs of glasses on your desk and each day you choose to wear a pair of glasses and it has a slightly different tint than the other glasses. And it's just how you see the colors of your day, how you interpret your day is all seen through these glasses or the the mindset of your practice and yourself. And it's normal to have every once in a while to have glasses on that you don't feel great in. Nothing has gone wrong if you find yourself in that comparison game. That day that I was scrolling Instagram and had a bad afternoon because of how beautiful this this woman was, there's nothing wrong with that. That's the human experience. And I don't want to beat myself up around that. I just want to get really, really curious. It's like, okay, Laura, well, why, how, and why did you choose those glasses that day? Like, why? Um, And usually there's just more information there that you get to go and you get to look at. And really for me, that, that version of Laura that day is just a really old version of me that I hasn't been around for a while. So I think it was me dipping into a past part of myself that is is not who I am anymore. And I got to get really curious and laugh about it. And I got to tell my coach about it. And I got to tell Shelby about it. And I got to tell my clients about it. And I got to tell my husband about it. I didn't keep it to myself. I really like it, wanted to let that go. And by telling other people about it, I, I got to let that go. So It is our responsibility and really our birthright as a human to choose what glasses we decide to see the world with. We had a a call yesterday with a group and we were just looking at negative versus positive mindset, which could be scarcity versus abundance mindset. And one of my clients had gone to an event and done a presentation and she, uh, I know she listens to this. So yes, I am talking about you, but I won't say your name. Um, <laughs> you you had gotten to an event and only six people were there. And so her mind said, oh, this is a, a normally this event's bigger. So it was kind of a, it was, it wasn't great because there's only six people there for my presentation. And then one of the other coaches in the group challenged that and said, the other way you could look at that is, oh my gosh, six strangers got to see what I do today. Yeah right? There's so many different ways we can choose to look at things. And I think that it's just an invitation to check what glasses do we have on that day and what glasses are we reaching for out of habit and how we see ourselves in the world. Right. And, and when you, we get to come from that place of celebrating versus getting down on ourselves, like it just feels better, right? It it makes it, it makes it more doable for the next time to where, if if we can come from like, dude, if even one person shows up for this celeb- or for this presentation, I'm going to be stoked because I'm going to get to connect with a person I've never connected with before. And honestly, that is that is the kind of mindset you have to have in order to keep going. I I, th- I think all the time, Laura, about yeah. the first the first workshops and webinars we hosted in our Facebook group, and like maybe two people would come 
for like the first four or five months that we held those things. And now 50 to 100 people come to our, mm-hmm. our workshops live, you know. And again, pivotal moment of where we, we just chose a different thought of we're going to keep we're going to keep showing up. We're still going to keep connecting and just having the belief that the ripple effect will eventually take hold. And it did. Um, but had we chosen, had we thrown ourselves a little bit of a pity party in that moment and stopped, who knows? Like, it might have taken us longer to get here. So um, I think the the quote we want to we want to leave you guys with is is a quote by by Albert Einstein and it says the most important decision we ever make is whether we believe we live in a friendly or hostile universe and the fuel behind that is your thoughts right like the thought that you choose to entertain which is i know something that we say all the time on repeat all the time and having a choice over what thoughts you just let circulate through your mind over and over again can really, really change your reality can really swap the glasses you put on that day. And it's a practice. It's not something you're going to nail <laughs> every day. When you get out of bed, mm-hmm. you're going to, you're going to get a handle on it. And then in six months, it's going to present itself differently. Um, again, this is where having a coach that can trend you over time can be really helpful. Um, but we wanted, I wanted to, to talk about this today just to put it on your radar. There was a long time where I didn't even know what the word scarcity mindset meant. And I was in, in the thick of it in a lot of ways. And I wish somebody had told me about it sooner. Yeah. It, any chance that you have to cultivate expecting everything to work out better than you could possibly imagine. And I know Shelby and I, we do this over and over again and I, I say this out loud all the time when people talk about money. I've said this over and over and oh, I money just comes to me. I can feel it coming right now. It's always on its way, so I don't ever have to worry. Um, if you say that for two years, you guys, it's it's just your reality. That is my reality. That that money is always on its way to me. I don't even have to worry about how or when. And I can energetically feel it wanting to come because I'm a good steward of it. I'm a good steward of it. Um, and scarcity, that's just around money, but we can say this around anything. You know, my marriage is getting better and better every year we're married. And I expect it 20 years from now, it's going to be so much better and hotter and, and more exciting than it is today. I expect that. And that's something I'm cultivating because it's something I want more of. So it's really our responsibility to choose what glasses we put on every day and oh my gosh, our clients, our clients depend on us. They depend on us to choose the right glasses for that first powerful conversation, for that second powerful conversation. Um, Absolutely. And then you can take them off after it, right? You could do your proposal, take those glasses off and then tell your coach that was such bullshit. I completely, I I actually don't feel that way. Cool. But you tried. Like you really, really tried to cultivate that. And it's okay to not have it all the time, but it is our responsibility to be aware and take in and to fully own our perception of how we see ourselves in the world. Totally. And one last little nugget here before we jump off team is our brains have been programmed to find the worst case scenario. And I think as nurses, this has been exacerbated. Every time you do anything, Mm. you are constantly wondering, how can this go wrong? And now in the coaching world, you get to entertain the other side of the coin of what, what if it all works out? What if it all goes right? What if I completely knock this out of the park? And we encourage you to start training, training your brain today. Every, every day, lean in a little harder and a little more. And we are here, we are here to support you along the way. Um, but come, come find us in the, in our successful nurse coach Facebook group. If you are not there, we would love to have you. We would love to hear the stories of scarcity mindset and how you flip the switch. And if you are curious about what it would look like to partner with us on a more, on a deeper level, not just letting us talk to you in your ear pods every Monday and, um, continue this work even further. We have, um, a a little quiz on our website that you can take on what level of support you might need. So come in, come and check us out in those two places. We're happy to have you. 
And yeah, anything else, Laura, you want to add before we pop off? No, I just want to say uh, we, we've been getting such great feedback every Monday. I get messages, oh, I just listened to your podcast or like, this was so great. I felt like you were talking to me and we appreciate that. We love being with being here with you on Mondays. We want to bring the most real and pertinent topics to you. If there's something that you want more of, if there's something you're secretly struggling with that you want a 30 minute complete excavation of on this mm-hmm. podcast, just, just send us a message. We'd love to dive in to, to whatever you've got going on. Totally. All right, team. We will see you next week. Thanks for joining us. Bye.